members of the team look at single cell models, uh, even parts of different cells and what they could be doing computationally up to larger cell assemblies, to whole brains and behaviour. I think as computational neuroscientists, even individually, we tend to work across lots of different scales. I have a, a student who works on the pattern generation for swimming and struggling in tadpoles, and another who works on uh, EEG signals for studying the comprehension of language. So there's a, a large range of different problems we work on in neuroscience, but we tend to use similar uh, techniques to do with differential equations, to do with modelling, and then to do with uh, statistics. Over the years, the, the experimental people here, more than experimental people in most universities, have learned the value of computational approaches to neuroscience and are very open uh, to working with us. Uh, as Rosalyn said earlier, we have quite a, a varied group. We work uh, on different parts of the brain at different scales. You know, Nathan is a, a, a roboticist as well as a, a neuroscientist, and so he thinks of things in terms of how robots learn and how that compares to how, how animals learn. Um, uh, Kian works a lot on synapses on very small parts of cells. I work on lots of different projects at, at, at different scales, but doing um, differential equation modelling. There is a, a PhD programme here funded by the Wellcome Trust, the Neural Dynamics programme, uh, and the aim of that programme is to produce stu students who are sort of neuroscientists in the fullest sense. In other words, they've done both experiment and computation. And all these students have a computational supervisor and an experimental supervisor. The cultural environment of where we're based at the Merchant Venture School of Engineering with its three overlapping departments who are all sort of related to information and computation gives a wider culture to what we do. It's great that we sort of have some shorthand amongst the group because of the the training and where our students are situated that you know they know the key features of things like nonlinearities and emergent properties that you may not get from a traditional neuroscience training but you do if you come from this sort of environment of hardcore mathematics. When I uh, changed subjects originally from particle physics, I think one of the things that attracted me to neuroscience was that uh, it, it included this aspect of you know, helping society and, and helping uh, alleviate illness. But at the same time, it also included you know, uh, the potential to address these existential questions like what does it mean to think and you know, what does it mean to be alive. And at the same time, it included some uh, nice mathematics as well. So I mean, our subject sits at this intersection of three desiderata, you know, curing the sick, um, understanding uh, deep questions about our existence and, and doing some mathematics. I look at diseases, in particularly mental illness, so uh, obviously with ageing, part of the idea is to delineate normal, healthy, maybe computationally optimal changes in the brain with changes that are going to maybe lead into um, dark corners like dementia and Parkinson's disease. So um, yeah, very uh, pragmatically some of the work I do is modelling what DBS does, that deep brain stimulation for PD and how it can alleviate motor symptoms and how those ideas might be transported into a um, model to improve memory through DBS or to stop epilepsy through DBS. Sodium has uh, an extra uh, state here, open blocked. It has extra closed states as well, but I'll leave that out because so I don't know which difference. But, <laughs> but basically the Markov diagram has this extra, extra piece here, the open block state. And in particular conditions, in other words, the conditions... You know, what's very satisfying is just like when you're a child and you, you, know, you take apart the toaster and work out how the thermostat works. You, 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 you deal with experimental data f uh, from, from neuroscientists and you understand or help to understand how some cell works, how learning in some, uh, in some circuit works. You know, what are these little machines? What are, the, what are these little steps? What are these building blocks that at some stage must add up to, to the working of the brain or at some stage may add up to the free energy principle or, or, or whatever you know, broad algorithmic or computational principles allow the brain to do the amazing things the brain does.